Okay, good day to you over there. My name is Dr. Tolu Ajipade, coming to you with a new video titled History Taking or Clerking. And we'll be adapting this to the MDCN part and the MDCN series that we've started, uh, making sure we have an understanding of this and uh, is this part of the exam when you see it. Okay, uh, if this is your first time, welcome. If this is your first time and you've seen previous videos, uh, you're most welcome. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for clicking on this video. And uh, I hope that uh, you leave this video, you 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 leave this video well impacted and and educated. As we all know, this is a very important part of the exam as well. It's inevitable. You cannot just avoid this. It will, it will surely come out in the OSCE part of the exam. And uh, so, you need to be very, very conversant with it and know exactly what is expected of you. So, uh, in this video today, I've actually divided this and uh, broken it down into a few sections. So, the first part is the overview. Uh, and then we'll move to the introduction. How do you introduce your clerking? How do you introduce yourself to the patient and all of that? And then we move to the body, the main part of the clerking. This is where we totally describe how you should take uh, a detailed history of a patient. Okay. And then we move to the next part, which is uh, past medical history. So uh, in this part, we'll be talking about how do you really get the medical history of your patient and then inside of this I've also fixed in the past surgical history okay and then a very important part as well is the system review where we touch on uh, particular symptoms related to several body systems just to be sure we, we're not missing anything out okay so that's what we're doing in that part and then thank you I actually put that as a section because it's something we need to talk about. Okay, so the first part, clerking. So what exactly is clerking? So as you can see here, the medical history, case history of a patient is information gained by the physician by asking specific questions either of the patient or what people who come along with the patient, maybe the patient's family member and all of that and and the aim of this is to obtain useful information in uh in coming up with a diagnosis okay and um uh in a bid to provide perfect uh medical care for the patients okay one thing you should know is the difference between symptoms and signs so the symptoms are what you get from the patient you know those are the things you elicit from the patient and or the family member or something uh, while signs are the things you can directly ascertain by physical examination okay and uh so clerking 101 <laughs> the basics of clerking so i've listed these out the first thing you need to do is establish rapport just like i mentioned in other videos rapport is just very important okay uh, and then you move to the bio data. There's a common uh, acronym that I enjoy using, which is Nastroma, which makes it very easy to go through the bio data almost reflexively, like you just do it without even thinking about it so much. Okay, then you confirm the presenting complaints of the patient, and then you check, you click, sorry, you click for symptoms in descending order. So you start from the symptoms that started first. So you say, if the person, if you ask her, why are you here today in the in the presenting complaint, and the person lists a couple of symptoms, and then you need to start from, you need to ask the patient which of these started first, and then you click from that first. You know, you 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 ask questions based on that first, and then you say, what came next? Then you ask on that. You understand? So um, we'll be using uh, acronym called Socrates for pain and doctor for other types of symptoms that aren't pain. And then we move on to the to ruling out differentials and then you ask questions about causes. And then we move to the complications. You ask about possible complications if the person is experiencing any of those. And then care so far. What have you done about this so far? What has the patient done? What has it been to the hospital? ETC. Okay, and then we move to the past medical history. So I've divided this for easy for clarity. I've divided this into uh, past medical history for pediatrics, ONG, and others. So for pediatrics, we'll be using an acronym called BIND. For ONG, we actually won't be using an acronym. We'll be 
you have detailed it into steps. So you ask about the obstetric history first and then the gynecological history next. And then uh, there's something called shade PSB, which um, are just important things to ask. It's an acronym. It also encompasses uh, surgical history as well. And then we have social history and then drug history and then the system review where you take your time. For the exam, you, most times you'll be given a, a time limit, okay? If it's five minutes, you would want to run through the whole clerking as fast as possible and then you get to the system review. Let's imagine you ran through it too fast, okay? You went too, too briskly, too quickly over the the previous part and then you have about one minute left. What do you do with this time, okay? So don't rush through the system review as well. So take your time here and ask questions one after the other pick each system and then talk about it in detail so that's the basic introduction that we'll be doing today uh so we've gone through all of that clerking differentials complications care so far past medical history shared psb social history drug history system review so let's get to the rule of thumb okay uh for the mdcn exam that's the medical dental council of nigeria's exam you also scored for sequence. And not just the MBCN exam, I believe most medical exams will score you for sequence uh, because it's pretty important that you are professional, you sound professional when you're taking your history and you're not just all over the place, okay? So uh, you scored for sequence, but you know, under examination tension, especially for those who didn't have enough time to prepare for the examination, you could get a little carried away and confused when you miss your sequence. But don't let that rain on your parade. Don't let that uh, get, cause a whole mix up where you just forget every other thing you have to do and try and get in your, 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 try getting back into the sequence. Just continue with what you remember because the math for sequence could just be very, very, very uh, tiny. It could just be one mark, for example. So don't let that mess the whole thing up. And then every station takes five minutes in the MBCN exam. So be very cautious of time. Don't wait for all of their answers. So some people, there's this big question people ask. Uh, should I wait to get answers, to get replies from the patients when I ask the questions in the exams now, not real life? Uh, and the fact of the matter is uh, the exam is not for your patient. The exam is for you. You're being tested, not your patient being tested. Now, that doesn't mean you should be discourteous and just... Make it seem like the I mean, just make it seem like the patient giving to you doesn't really matter. So what I would advise is, uh, uh, when you get when you ask a question, for example, the bio data. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? What's your age? What's your tribe? What's your religion? So don't rush it too much. Just say what's your name when the person says, da, 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 da. okay, move to the next one. Before the person finishes, move to the next one. What's your name? What's your age? Okay, what's your tribe? What's your religion? Are you married? Where do you live? And what job do you do, man? You understand? Things like that. You don't need to wait for every single answer. Because some people may not be well trained to know that they should give short answers. So just run through it. Let them answer shortly. And then for some, you don't need to let them answer, just move on, okay? Especially when you know time isn't on your side and the topic is really long, okay? Um, so, another thing to do is to remain calm and collected. You know, I've seen people who are really uh, conversant with this material, but when it comes to the day of the exam, they get really agitated, they, they start to fidget, and that, you know, takes a toll on their marks and their delivery of the, of the clerking. So... Uh, one thing I'll say is uh, to remain calm and collected, you need to practice this. You need to simulate the exam structure, the exam structure by having mock mock tests weeks to your exam, uh, putting yourself on that duress uh, when you are practicing with fellow doctors. You know, people who are there to like mark you and. Uh, critique you understand don't just do it on your own have people who will critique you put yourself on that exam condition so and so the next part we'll be looking at are uh, essential understandings uh when it comes to the introduction so how do you establish this rapport first thing you need to do is smile don't have a tense face okay you know smiling there's something i heard about smiling and you should try it uh when you don't feel like smiling fake a smile and then it becomes real in a few seconds tried okay so smile and then you need to say good day ma or good day sir my name is 
so 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 uh one other thing you should know that i heard i don't know how true it is is that you shouldn't add doctor to your name so just say my name is ajibade to because uh, i don't know since it's a licensing exam they believe you're not a doctor in their own uh in their own way in your eyes okay so just say my name is ajibade to I'm a candidate, I'm an MDCN candidate, you give your examination number, examination number 0000, and for the purpose of this exam, I would like to ask you a few questions. May I go ahead, sir? Just cram this, okay? So, sir, what's your name, what's your age, what's your tribe, what's your religion, are you married, where do you live, and what job do you do? Okay? So you could just have a flow in your mind. That is how I form the flow in my own mind. For you, you could just have it... You could ask these questions in a, in a bazillion way. So just to get the right way to ask these questions. Ask about the name, the age, the tribe, the religion, job, marriage, and residence. Okay, where do you live? And then you confirm the complaint. So, Ma, uh, okay, I'm using a sir here. So, sir, why are you here today? The person then confirms the complaint that you already have on your paper. Okay, I think you get what I'm trying to say. Sometimes the, the, the complaint on the, on the question sheet could be pretty confusing and you do not really know what to ask. For example, I had a question where the, the child was brought to the hospital and the child's mother, the child's mother died at childbirth and then I, I think she, she died of a, she died of a, postpartum hemorrhage and then the grandmother was the one with the child and now the child was complaining of PEM that's a uh, protein energy malnutrition so it was really convoluted and I was like okay so where do I start from who is the who is this woman here who is this child are you the mother so I had to ask so why are you here today and who are you to this person so in a way that gave me uh, a clearer picture of what I had to deal with okay um so we've talked about this we've talked about the bio data now if you look here in the bio data we used and i talked about using nastroma n for name a for age you can see the s there is a uh, pretty minute it's tiny i did that on purpose because it doesn't really matter you don't need to ask about the sex of the person if you are seeing the person right in front of you okay you know if the person is male or female okay uh, except if the person, you know, has all the gender, gender, how do you say, all the gender affiliations, you get me. So, uh, the name, the age, the tribe of the person, R for the religion of the person, O for uh, occupation, M for marriage, and A for address. So, if you could follow that, it makes it way easier. Confirm complaint. We talked about this. So let's move to the next part, which is the body of the thing. So, the body. Let's talk about how you clerk the presenting complaints. Okay? So, after you've asked what complaints do you have, then uh, you, you, you clerk these complaints before you move to your own preliminary diagnosis and then do differentials for that and causes of that you understand so let's talk about it the person comes to the hospital and says oh i'm complaining of this this and that like i mentioned earlier if it's more than one symptom the person says the, the person is complaining of you need to start from the first complaint which of these started first and then you question on that before moving to the next and then you ask which came next and then you ask what came after that so most times you will be giving more than two symptoms to clerk for you understand and then it's from these symptoms you blow it up into a whole a full-blown uh, a full-blown diagnosis okay so if it's pain use the acronym socrates so socrates for pain pain socrates go together okay so what does socrates mean s means sight the question you ask on this is where exactly do you feel this pain so, for the sake of this exam and clerking, don't ask the person to place a finger on the place to feel the on the on the points to feel the pain, because that will waste your time. Okay, just say where exactly do you feel the pain. If it's physical examination, 
and then maybe abdominal or something and the person complains of pain you need to ask where exactly do you feel it can you place a finger on it but this isn't physical examination this is just basic clerking okay so just ask where do you feel the pain sir okay and uh, then O for onset when did this pain start C for character now is this pain a sharp pain is it a dull pain is it crushing okay so you need to confirm all of this okay is it sharp is it dull is it crushing is it piercing okay thank you very much so those will give you a, a clearer understanding of okay what type of pain we're dealing with okay and then r for radiation you need to ask does this pain radiate to other parts of your body do you feel this pain radiating to your back maybe your, your your neck okay do you feel this pain radiating to your to your groin okay to your loins so things like that you need to ask about that and then you move to the alleviating factors that's a socrates so a for alleviating factors and how do you ask about this are there things that make this pain feel better that's a okay and then t for time so basically how do you ask this question you say what time of the day do you experience this symptom is it in the morning in the afternoon or at night you don't even need to say that part just say you don't need to say the morning afternoon night part just say what time of the day do you experience this because you need to be as fast as possible and then e for exacerbating factors uh here you just ask about uh are there things that make this pain feel worse and then s for severity and now uh for this you ask this very generic question okay on a scale of one to ten with one being the least and uh, 10 being the highest how bad is this pain or on a scale of 1 to 10 with 1 being the least and 10 being the highest how would you describe the severity of this pain so all of these have to get very reflexive to you so there's a lot of root learning you have to do with this and how does it come by constant practice okay when you practice this over and over it just sticks to you because these are very generic parts they don't change for the different diseases so you just know you will always have this. If it's pain, you use Socrates. If it's not pain, okay, if it's other symptoms like uh, cough, kata, uh, etc., et okay, you use the acronym with title doctor. So we've talked about biodata nastroma, presenting complaint, what, why are you here today? And then we mentioned Socrates for clerking pain symptoms and then for other symptoms we're using doctor now so this video is filled with several acronyms that will come very handy for your preparation okay so doctor d means duration so the first question how long have you been experiencing this sir okay and then onset O. Oh, when did you start experiencing this when did you start feeling this way when did you start experiencing this cough when did you start experiencing this okay uh and then c for character so how do you ask this? Uh, is the cough a dry cough? Is it a wet cough? And then you could, because I don't know if people would understand, is it productive or unproductive? So you could, for example, I, I asked the question about cough. Yeah, I think I got tuberculosis in one of my clerking. And I said, uh, so is this, I, do you have, is the cough a dry cough or a wet cough? And the patient said, oh, it's productive. And I'm like, okay, you understand? So just try to keep the language as simple as possible. Okay, that's a golden rule. So is the cough a wet cough or a dry cough? It, uh, if it's fever, you ask, is this fever a high-grade fever, a low-grade fever? Okay, uh, how hot do you get? Okay, uh, has the if it's difficulty urinating, you ask, okay, has this urinating been getting worse over time or getting better over time? So depending on the, compl on the complaint, then you adapt that to the uh, question you are asking, okay, based on character. So that's DOC. In the doc and then tor doctor t for time when do you experience this at home okay do you experience this at home do you experience this in a particular location is it when you are at rest or when you are uh, doing a particular activity okay just to be sure what influences these symptoms okay okay so for imagine a case of tuberculosis okay uh how would you ask for other related symptoms you ask about uh okay uh, maybe the person already came complaining of cough, fever, weight loss. 
And you know this is a respiratory problem, okay? So you could ask for other things like uh, wheezing, dyspnea, sputum, okay? And then for related phenomena, you could ask uh, uh, things like, for tuberculosis still, you could ask things like, uh, uh, have you been experiencing drenching night sweats? Have you been experiencing low-grade uh, fever? Have you been experiencing weight loss recently, okay? So uh, that way you're, 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 you're really uh, streamlining it to tuberculosis already even before you get to causes okay but one thing i would like to mention is that if you've mentioned if you've mentioned drenching night sweats already in your other related symptoms when you get to causes don't uh, or you're trying to when you get to causes and you're trying to single out uh, tuberculosis don't mention it again okay just mention all the possible causes like uh, like uh where they live is it very congested okay they are, they are, they are, exposure to irritants, the type of occupations, HIV status, and all of that. We'll get into that later, okay? And uh, let's move on to the next part. So we've talked about Socrates for pain symptoms and doctor for other symptoms. So let's get to the other part. Okay, there's something I actually forgot to mention earlier. So after Nastroma for the bio data, there's something we use called 5Cs. So the 5Cs are uh, uh, presenting complaints, that's C for complaint. Uh, the second C, we've done the presenting complaint part. The second C is course, that's C-O-U-R-S-E, okay? Uh, course of the disease. And then the next one is cause. Then the next C, the fourth one is complication. And then the fifth is care so far. So if you can go through these five C's using the acronyms embedded in each of the C's, then it gets much easier. So we have uh, the five C's, complaint, course, causes, complication, and care so far, okay? So don't forget that. Now to confirm the cause, uh, the first thing to rule out are differentials, okay? So rule out differentials based on the presenting complaint. For example, for cough, we mentioned you asking about night sweats for tuberculosis, exposure to irritants for uh, for maybe asthma and the rest, uh, occupation to rule out low socioeconomic status. Uh, you could ask for things like low-grade fever, multiple sexual partners, diarrhea to rule out uh, to rule out. Uh, HIV, which would be a cause of that, and then things like that. And then uh, after ruling out the differentials, uh, you could then rule out things like, uh, once you have an idea of the disease, then you ask about causes of the disease or risk factors for it. You understand what I'm saying? Like what exactly could cause the tuberculosis? So since you now you know it's most likely tuberculosis and you've ruled out from differentials and the person answered yes to night sweats, you understand? Then you ask about causes of the tuberculosis. If you've not asked about HIV, you ask about HIV here. Okay, so those are the risk factors for it. So talk about differentials and then risk factors. So all of those are on the causes. And then the next C is complications. This is where you ask about complications of the disease, okay? Um, complications of the disease, let's look at an, a disease example like peptic ulcer here. You ask about um, a sudden sharp abdominal pain that becomes constant. You know, those are complications of peptic ulcer. There could be perf perforation, there could be malignancies, you know. And then you ask, have you been experiencing any form of weight loss recently? That's to ask if there is any form of malignancy, okay? And then you ask, have you been experiencing blood in your vomit? You know, that's where it starts to bleed. Those are complications of the disease, which will lead to uh, bleeding there, could lead to anemia and the rest. So you ask about things like that. Have you been feeling very weak recently? Okay, do you feel tired easily? So those are complications of the peptic ulcer there, okay? And then you move to care so far care so far that's the last c in this part what do you do the first thing you need to ask is what have you done about this so far so what have you done so far sir uh have you used any home remedies have you used any herbal remedies ma okay have you ever have you been to the hospital complaining of this okay if the person says yes then you ask that what what investigations were done on you okay and uh have you used any medications ever since so we mentioned Home remedies, 
herbal remedies, uh, hospital visits, investigations, medications. So another thing you need to mention that could give you extra marks is uh, if you're having ideas or you've, you've narrowed it down to a particular disease, you could ask questions on that disease. For example, if it's tuberculosis and you're asking about care so far, you could say, have you had an x-ray, a chest x-ray done? Have you had a mantus test, which is like a skin test done on you? Okay, have you used any form of antibiotics? Have you used rifampicin? Have you used isoniazid? Okay, maybe with vitamin B6? Have you used things like that? Okay, or if the person doesn't know rifampicin, you can say, have you used a drug that actually made your urine turn red? Those are simple ways to ask difficult questions, okay? So, care so far, you get the idea. Important points to note. Don't get carried away by the section you prefer. I would say a maximum of five points for the causes and complications. Yes, five points each. So don't go beyond five causes, five complications. Some people want to cram all the causes in the book, pick up Harrison and cram all the causes in, in Harrison into, the, into a very short time. That would affect you in the other sections of the exam. So just stay focused. Don't get carried away because, oh, I like these causes. I, I know so many causes about tuberculosis. So many causes of tuberculosis. And then you keep talking and talking. Oh, I know so many causes of, uh, of uh, HIV. And then you keep talking and talking and talking. No. Focus on five. And then if you can't get up to five, move on to the next, okay? And uh, one other thing you need to mention, you need to know is that for pediatrics and obstetrics and gynecology, if you notice, I mentioned we'll have to take a pediatric history. If for pediatrics, we'll have to take an obstetrics history, a gynecological history for an OBGYN case. So I would advise you just ask just three courses, okay, in those uh, cases, okay? Just three causes, three complications, and move on. Because there are loads of history to be taken in those cases, okay? And be sure to use simple layman language. Uh, use the common man language as opposed to medical terms, because that also counts as being a good, a good history taker, okay? Uh, the next step, past medical history. As you can see here, we have the pediatrics, we have... OBGYN, and then we have other cases because they're very peculiar. So let's look at pediatrics case. How do you take a past medical history of a child? So to take the past medical history of a child, you use the acronym BIND. 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 So child, BIND. BIND, child. Okay, uh, so what do I mean by BIND? Let's pick the B part. The B part starts, stands for birth history. So it stands for the birth history of the child. And in this part, of course, the birth of a child is in three parts. You have the prenatal, you have the natal, and the postnatal. So you need to ask questions on these three parts to get a full mark, okay? So how do you ask prenatal questions here? So for prenatal, you just ask these few questions. How old was the mother at the time of pregnancy for this child? Okay, and then you ask, how many babies had she carried up to the 28th week before this child? Okay, now, why 28th week? Because that's the age of viability of a child. So, uh, don't just say how many babies that she had in the past, or how many pregnancies did she have in the past. Because if it wasn't up to the 28th week, it doesn't count as being viable. Okay, so moving on, you ask, at what month did the mother go for her first antenatal booking? After how many months of pregnancy did she go for her first antenatal booking? Okay, so you ask a few questions based on the antenatal appointments and the rest. You say, did she use hematinics uh, during the pregnancy? Did she use antiretroviral drugs to... You know, did she use uh, a malaria prophylaxis? If they don't know what that is, you could say drugs like fancy that to prevent against malaria. Okay, were there any complaints during the pregnancy? Okay, so those five questions will deal with the prenatal part. Then the natal part. Okay, you ask, was this baby carried to term or not? Was the baby, was the delivery prolonged? Okay, was the labor induced or spontaneous? Okay, was this was the delivery of this child natural or was it through cesarean section or maybe through instrumental use, okay? And then uh, 
any event such as excessive bleeding after delivery or during delivery, okay, if the, person, if the patient says yes, there was bleeding, you see how many pints of blood was the mother transfused with uh, uh, following his bleeding? Uh, you ask about the baby, did the baby have any form of uh, defects, so shoulder, shoulder dislocation, shoulder dystocia? Did the child have, was, was, has, has there been any history of uh, stillbirth in this child? Okay, in this, uh, in this woman? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, did the baby cry or breathe spontaneously after birth? Okay, for how long were you admitted in the hospital after delivery? Okay, have you had any complaints peculiar to this child uh, since the birth of this child? You get me? And those questions in total will deal with uh, the birth history of a child. You need to just get these questions into your head. Okay, so that's uh, about 13 questions to learn. Okay, so basically these 13 questions and you are fine for the B part, which is the birth history. So let's move to the I, which is immune. Okay, we've done this. We've done the prenatal, natal, and the postnatal, okay? So let's move to the I, which is immunization history. I for immunization history, okay? So uh, immunization history is based on the current NPI schedule. So it's long, and uh, you know the MPI schedule, so for your exam it could be different, it could have changed, okay? So uh, you need to learn the MPI schedule, okay? For your exam, uh, you should know it in detail. Detailed knowledge of it will be necessary in case you're asked in uh, the MCQ section of the exam. And uh, sometimes you could have the MPI schedule as even a question in the OSCE examination. So, But for the clerking part, uh, in light of those time constraints you have, uh, you should just summarize it while taking the pediatric history. So uh, here's, how, here's how the immunization question is asked, okay? For example, for the case of the PEM that I mentioned earlier, which I got as a question in mind. So what I did was, did this child receive the complete immunization as in the current Nigeria, uh, Nigerian program of immunization schedule? You understand? I asked that, and the person said, yes, she got all immunizations. Then for clarity, you could ask a few other questions, so it just doesn't seem too general. Because what if the person didn't get everything, and they actually thought that the child actually got totally immunized, okay? So you could ask a few questions. Did the child receive three vaccines at birth? Depending on the schedule, for my schedule, there were three vaccines at birth. I didn't need to get deep into the detail of every single one of the vaccines, so I just did. Okay, did the child receive three vaccines at birth? Did the child receive four at six weeks, the child received uh, uh, four vaccines at six weeks, which included two oral vaccines. Uh, you know, that's the oral polio and the rotavirus, you know. But I just said two vaccines through the mouth. Okay, did the child receive the same set of vaccines at four weeks and ten weeks? Okay, did the child receive uh, another four vaccines at 14 weeks? Okay, what about a vitamin A vaccine through the mouth at six months? Okay, three more vaccines at nine months, two more vaccines at 15 months. And please and please rush through this if it is not the question specifically, okay? Uh, the patient's parents don't even know the specific of the vaccine they don't know the names of these vaccines many of them don't uh, they may not even remember the dates they were given but the months could still be a little uh, in their remembrance okay so just rush through these don't focus on the details in clerking okay thank you very much and then moving on to the nutritional history which is the end part of the bind so pediatrics history bind for the nutritional history, there's another acronym to remember, which is FADU. Now, one thing I'll tell you is these acronyms may seem like a lot, but as you keep using them during practice over a course of two, three months, every single day, practice and practice and practice, you will be fine. You, it becomes very easy to you. Like It seems like nothing. It seems like a piece of cake, okay? So FADU for nutritional history. The first part of FADU is a frequency. Now, how do you ask the question of frequency of nutrition of this child? How many times does this child eat per day? Now, the normal should be six times, okay? So, for adequacy, I ask, does this child lick the plate after eating? So, if the child licks the plate, it signifies the child isn't full and the feeding isn't adequate. So, an adequate child, I mean, a child who is fed adequately would actually have remnants left 
and not be able to finish it. But if a child is licking the plate, it doesn't exactly mean the food is delicious or the food is, you know, really nice and nutritious. It simply passes the message that the feeding is inadequate. Okay, then for the density, you ask, what is the content of this child's meal? You don't need to go deep into oh, how many percent of carbohydrates and how many percent of protein and vitamins and all of that stuff. Just say, what's the content of this child's meal? Okay? And then uh, for utilization, you ask, uh, has this child been gaining weight recently? Do you feel this child has been gaining weight? Okay. And then you could ask the question about weaning. That's, uh, at what age did the child stop breastfeeding? And what was breast milk replaced with at that time? Okay. So that's all for nutritional history. Fadu. Let's go to the last part of pediatrics history, which is uh, D. D. Bind. D for developmental history okay so developmental history you don't have to go over the, the expected uh, developmental milestones every single one of it the totality of it now you now you know there are these tables that you should learn and you should know because those are questions that come out in your mcqs take it or leave it that is what comes out for mcqs okay basic stuff like that simple basic stuff so get your immunization table in get your developmental milestones in okay and then for clerking, how do you summarize this? So basically, you could ask the three months, six months, nine months, 12 months milestone questions, okay? How do you ask this? Was the child able to move the leg from left to right at three months? Was the child able to sit without support at six months? Was the child able to stand with support, with support, not without, with support at nine months? And was the child able to stand without support at 12 months? Those four questions have answer the developmental milestone question for you. So BIND is done. Pediatrics uh, past medical history is done. You get me? So let's move to the uh, let's move to the past medical history for OBGYN. For obstetrics and gynecology cases, the peculiarities, there are a few peculiarities of clerking of OBGYN cases, okay? In biodata, you make sure you ask about the last menstrual period, okay? If it's a woman coming into the hospital, even though it's not done that way in real life, I guess, but for the exam, if it's a woman at the hospital, you should ask the past, the last menstrual period of the woman because pregnancy actually, um, it could mask a whole lot of symptoms. It could change the course of diseases and all. Okay, so ask how many, what was your last menstrual period in biodata? After asking the nastroma, then you go for LMP. And then you ask how many pregnancies have you had in total if it's a peculiar obstetrics and gynecology case. LMP is for every single woman walking into your door. Then these other two questions are for specific obstetrics and gynecological cases, okay? Like a woman complaining of infertility, a woman complaining of, uh, of uh, oh shit, a woman complaining of uh, antenatal bleeding or things like that, okay? Uh, so uh, the other questions you should ask for those cases are, how many pregnancies have you had in total and how many pregnancies have you had up to the 28th week, okay? And then the last question you should ask is, when was the last time you were in the hospital for delivery, not after? That's a peculiarity of all obstetrics and gynecological cases. And then after care so far, that's the five C's, you do the obstetrics history in the following pattern. Okay, if nulliparous, you skip this step and move to gynecological history because, of course, if the woman hasn't had a baby, there is nothing to ask about for obstetric history. Uh, what I did was the pattern I used was okay, so I'll be asking you a few questions about your previous pregnancies, and you should give me an answer for each one of your past pregnancies. Okay, ma, what years did you have your previous pregnancies? Okay, were they to term or not? Uh, were the labors prolonged or not? Was it spontaneous or induced? Uh, was, did you, was it a vaginal delivery, cesarean section, or did you have any form of instrumental delivery used? Okay. Uh, did you have any form of excessive bleeding, and how many pints of blood were you transfused with? Okay. Was there injury to the baby, or did you have any form of stillbirth in the past? Okay. Okay. What was the sex of your babies, and what was the weight of your babies? Uh, how long were you admitted in hospital afterwards? Uh, have you, do you have any complaints so far about your children? Anything peculiar to these children you've had in the past? Okay, how many of these children are alive currently? And how many have passed away? Okay, 
you could just ask how many are alive because you don't want to get to you know evoke uh, poignant emotions that would you know stress the mother out. Okay, how many babies have you ex did you exclusively breastfeed? So these questions will save your life. So for clerking, there are a lot of questions that are just generic that you need to cram. But by the time you keep doing them over and over and over and over and over, it just gets a part, it becomes a part of you, okay? Uh, and then gynecological history. What do we do here? For gynecological history, you first ask about menstruation, okay? So you ask, when was the first time you had your menstruation? Okay, that's men, okay. Okay, when was the first time you had menstruation? Okay, and what's the average duration? Of your menses, what's the average duration of your of your cycle? Okay, have you been experiencing any irregularities with your periods? Okay, do you experience uh, scanty flow or heavy flow, or you could just ask how many pads do you use? Okay, and then uh, do you experience any pain during menstruation or during sex? You know, and then uh, do you know do you know about contraceptives? And have you used any contraceptives? Okay, do you know about abortions? Have you had any abortions in the past? And uh, what were the outcomes of the abortions? Were there any complications of your abortions? Okay, when was the last time you had a pap smear? Uh, moving on to cases of pediatrics and obstetrics. Move to this after the pediatrics history, obstetrics and gynecological history. Okay, so we said uh, for for. ONG and pediatrics, those are peculiar cases. For other things, just move to this. And even after your pediatrics and gynecology, you move to the shade PSB. Shade PSB. How do you ask this, okay? Are you a non sickle cell patient? That's the S. Uh, are you a non hypertensive patient? So you, you ask this. Are you a non sickle cell patient? Hypertensive patient? Asthmatic patient? Diabetic patient? Epilepsy patient, okay. Peptic ulcer patient, okay. Have you had any surgeries in the past? Do you share shaps? Have you had any blood transfusions? So we have the, as you can see in white there, we have S H A D E P S B. So P for peptic ulcer, S for surgeries, B for blood transfusions. Don't forget the question on surgery, because that counts as a whole section, which is past surgical history, okay. Then ask for any other chronic diseases and cancer, okay? So that's uh, that for that section. And then you go to the social history and the drug history. So for social history, you ask, do you smoke, do you drink, do you use any illicit drugs? For social history of a baby, you could ask, uh, do people smoke around this child? Okay, has this child been, ever been exposed to uh, the use of alcohol? Has this child ever been exposed to, use, to the use of illicit drugs or the people around use illicit drugs? Okay, and then you ask about drug history, which are, do you have any drug allergies and are you on any drugs currently? You understand? Because you need to know what drugs the person is on currently. So it doesn't interact detrimentally to the patient, whatever drugs you'll be dispensing. Okay? So uh, that's it for social history, drug history. And then um, uh, we said patient PSB, quick recap, social history, drug history. Okay. Um, to system review. Okay, so here you mentally to pick two most significant systems affected by the disease. I expect you to have learned at least uh, 10 to 15 symptoms per system already because that is could be a whole section of the OSCE exam. So learn 10 15 important symptoms for each system and that would come very handy in this section of the clerking, okay? So for this part, you tell the patient this, please answer yes or no if you feel any of these following symptoms I will be mentioning, okay? You start with the most important, state about seven to ten symptoms, then move on to the next symptom, to the next system, uh, and state and start stating out symptoms from there. Now, that's if you have time for that, okay? Uh, this helps you identify symptoms that a patient may have forgotten to report, or that sometimes the patient has gotten used to the symptom, like uh, a patient who has gotten used to a particular pain in the back. 
I just feel it's normal that oh it's because of my posture that's why I have it and it may not be because of that so your questions these questions will help you pick out and single out all of those uh, those little little uh, symptoms that could be invasive okay and eluding so it also helps you avoid the awkward silence that ensues after you're done with a major clerking okay so you've finished the clerking you've done the past medical history past surgical history and then you still have time what do you do like i mentioned earlier take your time here and and just enjoy the process as the questions one after the other in a very confident manner. Don't fidget, don't be agitated. Just do it and get your marks and move on to the next station, okay? And uh, that is almost all. Now, do not ever forget to thank your patient at the end of your clerking session. So even if time runs out and you're still on past medical history, Make sure when you're leaving the patient, you say, thank you very much for your time. At the point the bell is ringing, just say, thank you very much for your time. Don't try and start adding extra things. Just say, thank you very much for your time. That will be all for today. Because that also gets a mark for it. You know, it shows your courtiers, okay? Thank you very much. Uh, so, 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 that basically rounds up our talk today on history taking and clerking. So I've been getting feedback from people uh, talking about uh, they would like to see more example videos where I do like a time simulated examination, five minutes, and try to pick each topic and use and, and, and clerk or do counseling in those five minutes. So, uh, you know, since your wish is our command and uh, I'm trying to be as helpful as possible, if that is what you want, uh, as an additional uh, as additional videos we are already working on it I'm working with a few other doctors who have written these exams successfully and uh, who have experience doing this and we'll be coming out with a few videos uh, not a few a couple of videos actually detailing example example topics okay most important topics that you could expect to the exam if you aren't subscribed to this channel make sure you do so make sure you subscribe so you do not miss these videos coming up more tutorials coming up i have a video on uh on uh tips and tricks for the laboratory analysis coming up as well so many timed uh simulated video simulated topics coming up so if you've not subscribed subscribe make sure you tell a friend about this and uh, leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about these videos. Let me know what you want to hear. Let me, get, let me know your ideas and your opinions on these things, okay? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the effort. Uh, see you in the next video. It's Dr. Tolu Ajibadi signing out. Have a nice day.